Hey there once again YouTube. Now I know that it has been about a week since I've done a video or so. Uh, it's because there's some good news and some bad news. Well, the good news is I'm now working full time at Trader Joe's and the bad news is I probably will only have time for either one or two videos or blog posts or updates every week. So I definitely will not be putting out as much content as before, but don't worry, I still am monitoring seismic areas especially volcanoes guys don't worry especially in the cascade range i still am monitoring because usually i monitor areas that i'm interested in and if any activity happens i make a video or a blog post but since i don't have as much time to make videos and blog posts i still am monitoring stuff i don't worry because that doesn't take as long as making a video or a blog post but just know that my content is going to slow down a little bit but i'm still going to be putting out videos for you guys uh, especially if something crazy happens you know, like an earthquake storm at a volcano, swelling at Yellowstone or Long Valley, you know, so on and so forth. So right now we're going to go to my website and always keep an eye on my website, especially the many different blogs that I have on my website. Keep an eye on all of those because I might post something without doing a video about it and you might miss it. So just keep an eye on my website every now and then. Check the different pages that I like to use to put out my research to you guys. We're just going to talk about Steamboat real quick. Because there really hasn't been too much in the way of seismicity as of late. But the most recent eruption occurred about two days ago. It was the 36th eruption of 2019. The 68th Steamboat Geyser eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. Steamboat continues to set a new record every time it erupts since it broke the all-time record on August 27, 2019. June 2019, again, broke a record of its own. As many of you probably know, it erupted seven times in June, setting an all-time record for eruptions in one calendar month. So 2019 is definitely a record-breaking year. And here's the 36th eruption right down here, which occurred at 542 UTC, September 18th, 2019, which would be 1142 PM Mountain Time, September 17th, 2019. And UTC is going to get a little confusing in about a month or two when daylight savings time ends. And yeah, because there's no daylight savings time for UTC time zone. Uh, I mean, not, not time zone, but UTC time code. Remember, UTC does not have time zones and it does not have daylight savings time. So it kind of conflicts with local time zones. It definitely conflicts a lot, but seismologists always use UTC for everything and makes correlating events and stuff like that a lot easier. So again, keep an eye out for the next Steamboat Eruption on my Steamboat Geyser page. I always uh, update it. I believe I updated this a few hours after the eruption occurred. And here it is on the helicopter from YNM, right there. Good old Steamboat Geyser. Still erupting like crazy, guys. Still erupting. Now, we're going to go to volcanoes.usgs.gov just real quick and see if those precursors were present as part of this previous Steamboat Geyser eruption. Remember how I told you it's Steamboat Geyser in the Norse Geyser Basin at Yellowstone Super Volcano? Does show precursor signs a good two to three days prior to an eruption. Now... This isn't 100%. Now, it always will show some sort of precursor activity. At least that's what it's shown in the past, every single, before every single eruption. But the eruption prior to this, I believe, actually, wait, let me see here. Which one was it? It's the 18th, 12th, 3rd. I believe it was this one right here, the 35th eruption, which was a little wacky. It erupted late, and the precursors lasted a very long time, I believe about four days. As you're about to see so you you can kind of predict when a steamboat geyser eruption will happen if you go to volcanoes.usgs.gov go to yellowstone and then click on monitoring go to the monitoring map zoom into norris up here and click the temperature gauge steamboat geyser click that and you can do past 24 hours past seven days or past 30 days let's look at the past 30 days of the past four eruptions okay so we see, notice precursors for about two to three days or so, and then boom, eruption. Precursors for about two to three days, eruption. Precursors for about, oh, look at that. I'm going to say four days, almost four days of precursor eruptions, which are very, very minor, small eruptions that can't be recorded on the seismometer, but are still recorded with the large increase in temperature related to those minor eruptions. So there are just a lot of little teeny tiny eruptions before steamboat erupts, and notice how it lasted again four days boom we had an eruption then goes back down to precursor excuse me um preliminary levels and then we see precursors increase again notice that and then boom we had the eruption and 
preliminary levels should last another three, four days, and then we should see pre precursors again after that. But isn't that strange? Usually it lasts about two to three days, but the last eruption was weird seeing that minor activity was constant over about a four day period, and then we saw the eruption. But just know that you can use this, guys. You can use this to see the precursors of when Steamboat Geyser will erupt. It will not show you really an exact time of when it'll erupt since the precursors often vary. But you'll just have to, at least it'll let you know when Steamboat is getting close to an eruption. Like if you saw a good two days worth of precursors, just know that Steamboat eruption is just right around the corner. Just right around the corner. Okay. So, that's it for that right now. Not too much in the way of seismicity has been happening lately. Not Nothing too crazy. Lake Taupo, which is a super volcano in New Zealand, actually saw magnitude 5 and additional seismicity and swarming within the caldera of that super volcano. And we also saw some magnitude 6s in Indonesia recently. Pretty deep. This one, the 6.0 at 732 UTC, was at 591.2 kilometers in depth. That is very deep, guys. And people did report feeling it right there. Indonesia gets smacked hard. Very, very hard. Now let's go over to Hawaii, shall we? Only six being reported via USGS in the past 24 hours. Maybe a little bit more than that actually occurred, but the most recent was a 2.4 at 2.4 kilometers in depth. Here we are at volcanoes.usgs.gov under Kilauea under multimedia and photochronology. Now, groundwater, most likely groundwater. There's still some room for debate and some people have conflicting opinions, but in my opinion, it's definitely groundwater. Um, coming through the caldera because the floor of Halimama is actually below the water table. So something must have shifted. Now, the thermal camera today showed surface temperatures on the water pond of Halimama of approximately 70 degrees Celsius, which is 158 degrees Fahrenheit, similar to previous observations. The water level continues to slowly rise, and mind you, there hasn't been any major rainfall really in Hawaii lately, so it continues to rise without any major rainfall. So... I'm pretty sure rainfall is out of the question. Uh, but there were no significant changes observed during today's visit. It just continues to very slowly rise. And here's the image, just real quick. We have Holly Mama right there. Zoom in. See that? And go over here. So it is hot water, guys. It is pretty hot water. Probably as hot as a geyser. Maybe even hotter. I'm not too sure about that, but... Yeah, the, look, look at how big the pond is getting. When they first discovered it on July 27th, it was just a little teeny, 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 tiny guy. But now it is actually growing to be pretty big. I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years, if Kilauea doesn't erupt by then, mind you. But uh, in a few years, it definitely could fill up this entire portion, guys. Definitely, because it's growing pretty quickly. And here's a picture of Hale Mau Mau Lake, which is what I am calling it now, and probably will be called in the future if it continues to rise and stay there. Um, so we do see in September 10, 2019, look at this rock right there. Go over here. Notice the rock is a little bit more submerged, and that's only in a time span of four days, guys. So it's, it's, I mean, it's, it is rising slowly, but in a good year or two, if Kilauea doesn't erupt, there's going to be a good sized lake within Hale Mau Mau, which is very intriguing, guys which has basically has never happened in monitoring history. Uh, going back, there really hasn't been much other news, just that the pond continues to grow, turning into lake now, actually, guys. Also, spasmodic tremor. Here we are at the monitoring map. Spasmodic tremor has basically ceased, guys. It's been a long time since I, I'm going to say probably a month, a good month since I've seen really any spasmodic tremor at all. If you don't know what spasmodic tremor is, it, it, uh, excuse me, what spasmodic tremor is and how it's related to volcanic activity on the big island of Hawaii, just go to my uh, description box below, go to the links, and look for the link that talks about what is Hawaii spasmodic tremor. Um, so swelling, which means the ground is uplifting due to the influx of magma into the system, meaning more magma is pouring in, slowly pouring into these systems. And, you know, it's not really rising towards the surface yet, but eventually if it gets to its breaking point and it will eventually as the ground swells, we know eventually, we know eventually it will reach a breaking point. But when is that breaking point really? But swelling uplift has been occurring at the Mauna Loa summit the Kilauea Summit, and along the Kilauea East Rift Zone. And also something they note in a lot of their Kilauea updates now is that this entire southern and southeastern section of Hawaii right here 
on the south flank of Kilauea has been moving towards the sea at a pretty steady rate since the magnitude 6.9 last year due to volcanic activity. And it's interesting to note that this whole area right here is the same direction, basically, as the fissures that opened up in Langani Estates. In Langani Estates, the fissures opened up sort of in a, I'm going to say, a southwest to northeast trend, sort of, kind of. More, more pointing east, actually, but they're, they're pretty much lined up like this along this, I'm going to call fracture zone, which actually it's a rift zone. And actually it's breaking away, guys. It is definitely going to fall into the ocean eventually. And I'm not saying that's going to happen anytime soon. And people are like, oh, the Hawaiian swamp, oh, it doesn't even exist. Yes, it does exist. And even the scientists are confirming that it is moving towards the ocean, even at a faster rate than it did before the 6.9 last year in this area so we'll definitely have to keep a close eye on this area right here because a collapse in this area would be bad news for hawaii and possibly even the coast of mexico california oregon uh they could get a good sized tsunami probably wouldn't be mega tsunami ish but it would definitely it definitely be very interesting to see that happen as long as nobody died if somebody died then that would be very sad guys because i don't know i don't know what could happen but GPS data is indicating it is moving. Let me see if I can find a GPS instrument that is online right now. Let's go the past two years. Let's see. That is not working very well. Let's see. Let's go right here. Okay. So here's an example of some of the GPS data. Now notice this is in meters, guys. 0.1 meters, 0.2 meters. So we saw a lot of deformation associated with the volcanic activity back in April and May and June and July of 2018. As time goes forward, notice this. Notice this very steep trend on the north-south GPS plot. Notice that the ground is moving towards the south in this location. And a lot of other stations in this area, and they, the scientists even noted this and even told people about this, that this is occurring. So that, that southern flank of Kilauea, here's Kilauea, right? This whole southern flank from right about here or so to all the way up here is ripping. It is literally ripping apart as we speak right now. I, albeit kind of slowly. I mean, it's not ripping apart. like That, that would cause magnitude 6s and 7s every day. But it is ripping apart and something we should definitely keep a close eye on and will cause volcanic and seismic activity in the future, possibly even in the near future. So very interesting changes are taking place in Hawaii. That's pretty much it for right now. Let's see if anything crazy happened on recording, because that does happen sometimes. A little bit of seismicity in northern Alaska up there, so I'm in 2.3.0, but nothing too much, guys. And watch, right when I get this video up, something's going to happen. That always happens. So that's pretty much it for right now, guys. I hope you have a great day. Again, I'll try to keep updating you guys about important things as time moves on, but there's no guarantee. Keep checking my website, because I might put up a blog post without putting out a video, so... Just letting you know, guys, work and family is more important to me, but I still have this marked as number three on my importance list. So, hope you guys have a great day. God bless, and enjoy your night.